All right, so we are live for this first class. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, I know some of you have already joined us and um, a couple more people may come in. We may not get to your comments all at the beginning, uh, but if you have something super important to ask in the middle of things, um, just type it in all caps and we'll be able to see it. Super important to ask in the middle of things, just type it in all caps. All right, <laughs> let's make sure we, okay. I was getting a little bit of feedback. All right, so, all right. Um, so we'll introduce ourselves and just kind of tell you who we are and what we've been doing um, with Gale Top Greenville, which is the group that we uh, started up last year uh, and did some classes live uh, last year in the local library and in one of the uh, coffee places. So we kind of rented a space there and had a class. It was really successful. Uh, we redesigned it to be online this time and a little more uh, conversation focused. So uh, first off, I'm Cheryl and um, I'm helping to teach uh, Irish here. Uh, I'm a continual learner myself. Uh, been learning on my own for over a decade now and uh, also starting to get in touch with native speakers and uh, really push myself above the um, upper intermediate level onto fluency hopefully in the next year or so um, and I just wanted to really get the language out there for people to learn so that's one of the things that helping get Gale Top Greenville off the ground has really been important for me. So that's me and I'll turn it over to Leah. Hi, I'm Leah. And even though I don't sound like it now, I was born and raised in a Gale Tucked or an Irish speaking um, part of Ireland, a very small Gale Tucked in the south of Ireland called um, Gale Tucked Naringa um, in the Dacia district um, in, um, in County Waterford. Um, I grew up in the old parish and in a ring, and then I moved to the U.S. in my teens. So I've been in the U.S. for 21 years now, and I've gradually lost my Irish accent. But I still I still remember speaking Irish, um, and I still remember, I'd say, most of the vocabulary. So I've um, been living in South Carolina for three years and just found out about um, the Greenville Whale took a year ago. And I'm, I'm thrilled that, um, that Cheryl has invited me to be part of this. Awesome. And Molly? Hi, it's Misha Molly. Um, I am, I have a few words to talk to the um, So I'm pretty much in the same boat as many of you. I'm reviewing, I've learned bits and pieces over the years, but not really too much to string uh, together. So like I said, I'm, I'm mostly just here along like the rest of you. And uh, I, I run social media so i'm just excited to be here yeah <laughs> if you see a post out there um you know maybe 75 percent of the time it is going to be from molly and she can she uh kind of goes through the comments and comments back and stuff so um we really appreciate her work on that so um so today we're going to start out with a kind of a basic uh, conversation, very small, but there's a lot to teach, especially if you've never come across the Irish language at all. Like if you have no, um, you know, no previous experience for it, there's a lot, even in this very simple, small conversation. So, so we're going to start off with that and introduce some concepts that we'll look at a lot deeper later. Uh, so this is more introduct uh, introducing you to uh, just the sounds of the language and also uh, some ba very basic vocabulary to get you used to some of the structures and things like that. So, um, and many of you may not have had any, you know, interaction with the language at all. So just kind of knowing the basic structures and kind of how things are working uh, can help you as we get into more deeper stuff. Um, all right, so we have a short conversation. I'm gonna pull it up on screen. Let me do that right quick. And oops, there we go. All right, so I'm going to pull this.
conversation up on screen. Um, and this PDF will become available um, after the live stream. I'm going to link it in the description uh, later on. It may take me a day or, or so to do that, but it will be linked in the description of the video later, as well as being sent out to those who are on our email list. So if you want to get on our email list, you can look us up on Facebook um, at Gale Talk Greenville on Facebook. And there's a little sign up button if you want to get on that email list so we can send you these PDFs. It's a lot easier that way. All right. So I'm going to read um, one of the characters and Leah's going to read the other. And we're going to go through the basic conversation here. Um, and the background for this conversation is that Tyg is an old friend from college visiting Cloda in her hometown for the first time. Uh, he arrives at her house. Um, and so the other note is just, you know, this may be short, but it has a lot to teach. So uh, we'll go ahead and go through that. Okay. So, Gia Gwitcha Cloda, on a show to hack. Dias Murrit, Falta Haig. Tar stock a gesig shias, let a hull, shai mahach nua. Gurv mahget, toshe das. Gurv mahget. Okay. So again, this is only four lines. Um, well, one of them has three sentences in it, but uh, we're going to take a look at these and break them down. So then we're going to look at the folklore, the vocabulary. So let's go ahead and switch to that. So I'm going to take, um, so I'm going to go in here. Now this, uh, we have all of the vocabulary for all of these words that come in this conversation since this is the very first one. But when, later when we do um, other conversations, we may skip over some of the ones that we've seen before, um, but we may reinforce them as well, especially if they're uh, important concepts. So for this one, we have everything listed. So I'm going to go through um, and read the English. And then if Leah can do the uh, pronunciation in Asquelega. So um, so the first one is hello. And it's Dierit in Irish. Yeah, you got to have that in the back of your throat <laughs> for yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and so that's if you're the first person to say hello. If you're if you're the first person to say hello, literally it means God to you. Uh, but it's used so commonly that that meaning has kind of faded away, much like some of old English words uh, and phrases. But the uh, the meaning that it has now is hello. All right. Um, the next one is house. Tach. And you may hear a little bit of the. Ch after a T, uh, and we'll go over that when we get into um, like slender and broad vowels. But um, so that one's house, and then this, sha, and I sha. do I speak Munster Irish. Um, mm. It may be pronounced show in some other parts of Ireland, but in the south, it's pronounced sha. Sure. Um, and most of the time, if you see an O somewhere without the fada, the accent on it, it's going to be sha. Or, or some shorter type of sound. Um, so yeah, I do hear sha a lot, um, but there was like one course, I, I can't remember which dialect it had, but it did say sha, so you may hear both. Um, and then also, um, is this? Anesha. Anesha. Um, and your, as in possessive? Sorry. Sorry. Duh. 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 And again, you may hear da, or you may hear some people, if they're being very like stressing on it, it may do something. Um, but most of the time it's da. Um, and then my. Ma. And then um, hello, the reply hello. Dias muerechit. So it. Sorry. So if you notice on the uh, vocabulary, uh, let me go ahead and scroll down. I got to keep switching. There we go. So, Dias uh, Muragwit. Um, so, if you notice there, we said that God to you was the meaning for the first one. And as you can see, they've added Mary into the sentence as well. So, that's a reply. Um, so, it can kind of become uh, 
like you're just adding things to be more and more polite back almost. Um, but it's, it's very common and most people just do it reflexively. Um, all right. So the next one is to, uh, come in, to come in. Tarishtach. Mm -hmm. And sit down. Sig Shias. Mm -hmm. And then please. Let a hall. Mm -hmm. That one can be a little bit hard, uh, especially because it gets said very quickly. Um, so it means with your will, with your will. Uh, but that's kind of what please it like, please would you or with your will, would you? Um, and then new. Nua. And you may hear it pronounced new in, in some dialects, but Nua or new. Um, and then thank you. Garimahagat. And so thank you is another one of those that doesn't directly translate. It means thank you, but it, it literally means like, may you have goodness or may goodness be with you, um, something like that. But it it is used in place of thank you like you would in English. And then nice. Das. Das. Um, and you may hear jazz. So the little, little bit of the J in there and some dialects too. Um, okay, very good. Um, so let's go look back at our conversation. And now that we know what these words mean, uh, we'll break that down. So um, Leah, if you would read um, just small pieces of it and I can translate. So I'll do the English if you can do the, um, do the Gwelga. You'll start with the English. Oh, we'll start with the uh, Gwelga, if you could. Okay. Diarit Achloda. Hello, Cloda. Anesha Dahach. Is this your house? Dias Murahit. Hello. Foilta Ahaig. Welcome, Taig. Tarstock Agasigshias. Come in and sit down. Let a hall. Please. Show a mahach nua. This is my new house. Gur mahagat. Thank you. Tashe das. This is nice. Or it is nice. Sorry. It is nice. Gur mahagat. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, the words that we had in our vocabulary um, are helping make up what we understand in the um, the Cora. So let's take a look at our grammar points now. So our pointy grammaty. So I'm going to go down here. So now just to reiterate, um, these things are these things are going to be reiterated in other lessons. So we're just touching on them here. Don't get overwhelmed by them. Um, but one of the things is I want to point out the word order. So let me get there. Yeah. So word order. Um, so in English, we have subject, verb, and direct object or predicate. Um, so we have, you know, he kicked the ball. Uh, but in Irish, most of the time you're going to see verb first then subject, then object. So it would be kicked he the ball. And that sounds almost like a question to us in English, uh, but in Irish, they're verb first. Um, so you almost have to think of the verb and the subject as being uh, together for, for those that are coming at it from English, from an English standpoint, and that may help you. Um, and you will hear a separation between um, the subject and the direct object when you hear people speak most of the time, too. Um, so it is verb, subject, object. Um, so it can trip up new learners, um, but it does become something that you pick up with practice and with habit. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Um, oh, it does have another point here for word order with... Um, 
the adjectives. So if you see here, it does say that adjectives come after uh, the nouns that they modify. So instead of saying new house, like we would in English, we say um, house new. So that's why in the conversation uh, you see uh, Cloda say shoi mohak nu or shoi mohak nua. Um, so the nua or the new comes after the word for house. So um, just keep that in mind. So it is a lot, a lot like if you've ever learned Spanish or the Romance languages, that's very similar. So the adjectives do come afterwards. Um, and then... A question, Cheryl. Um, sure. I don't see the PDF attached to the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, I it, how many people out there have <laughs> PDF right now? And if not... Right um, now, the PDF isn't, the PDF's only available on screen right now, but we're going to send those out uh, tomorrow. So by tom by the end of the day tomorrow, those will be attached to the replay of this um, and also sent out to our email list. So if you want to get on the email list, we can send that directly to you. Um, but yeah, it's not going to show up right now um, just because that we're doing this live. But um, as soon as I get it attached to the replay and get it sent to everyone in the email list, we can certainly do that. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. So that's for word order. Um, and again, we're going to see this time and time again. So don't stress about it. Um, and then I want to go over um, the broad and slender vowels. So broad and slender vowels um, have to do with uh, how they sound in your mouth, but they also affect the consonants around them in Irish. So we have A, O, and U. So those are broad vowels. Um, if you think of it, your mouth is more open, more round uh, when you say them. And then I and E are slender vowels. Uh, your mouth is partially closed or not as open. So th that can be an easier way to remember them. Um, and so... Uh, Irish spelling is very controlled by which type of vowel comes where. Um, so if you notice that with uh, like Gia, it's almost a, a DJ sound sometimes because the I is near the D. Uh, same thing with Jess, um, even though it is pronounced Das in other places, the D is much, the D is softer. Um, than if it were beside an A, an O, or a U. And then, of course, one of the bigger uh, ones that changes is S. Um, S next to a uh, I or an E, regardless of whether it has a, a Fada uh, accent on it or not, um, S next to an I or an E becomes SH. So that's the SH sound, such as the name Sean. So as you can see, it's S E A F A D A N. So Sean. And then also with a T sound, it'll often almost take a ch uh, onto it. So ishchuk, ishchuk. So um, so that T will have almost a ch sound kind of attached to it um, t if it's near a E or an I. Um, so this one has the S changing in. Uh, Ishchuk, as well as the T, um, somewhat changing. And there are other consonants that do this. Some of them are a little bit harder sounds to make from an English speaker standpoint, um, but they do take practice. Um, but even though this sounds very odd to an English speaker, um, it is something very regular throughout the entire Irish language. Um, there's very few exceptions. So once you learn the pattern, you can actually learn to spell words that you're just hearing and maybe you've never seen. Uh, and the spelling is much more regular than English words and much easier once you get used to it. Um, so it can seem kind of intimidating at first, but a lot of people complain about the Irish spelling and it's really much more simple and much more um, goes along in a pattern much more than English. So like if you have the word tough and the word couch are not pronounced the same, um, or let's see, cough, yeah, cough and tough, um, O-U-G-H, where we get the 
pronunciations for some of these. It's just crazy. Um, so English picks from so many different language backgrounds that our pronunciation and spelling is kind of all over the place. Uh, but Irish is very regular when it comes to that. So um, let's see. So that's just touching on that. We'll see that again and again. And again, it'll reinforce it. Um, let's see. Leah, did you want to touch on any of these or? I think you're excited. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, so why I'm often behind the Irish rules, you know, it's been so many years since I, I learned the why. Um, so you're explaining it much more coherently and quickly than I <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I'm trying to put it in a perspective from an English speaker standpoint, learning it because it can, it can get a little confusing. And a lot of people assume that Irish is just hard because of these things. Um, but really it's because we're coming at it from English, an English speaking standpoint, um, that it's very different. Um, whereas romance languages like Spanish and French and Italian, they have cognates, and there's, um, you know, Latin roots and things that we're familiar with, uh, whereas Guelga is, you know, in its own branch altogether uh, away from English. So we're on car. Huh? Or on bicycle. <laughs> on bicycle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, most languages do adopt some English words <laughs> and some words from other languages. A English does it all the time. So we have uh, even Irish has them too. Um, so I what are they kind of saying glushton instead of car though, Molly, just so you know. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the PC version. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, and so some uh some English words get worked in and a lot of people are trying to kind of phase those out in certain ways, but some of them are around to stay. So uh and that happens in every language, and it's kind of a sign that the language is is continually living. Uh, as well. So it's not always a bad thing. Um, so, uh, but yeah, if anybody's wondering why I know all these, this grammar stuff is because eventually I might get a doctorate in linguistics, but who knows? <laughs> um, but let's take a look at the next one. So uh, the vocative, uh, which is that ah. Uh, so if you go, if you remember, let me flip back to the conversation. So if we remember the conversation, uh, here where it says um, a hike and a chloda. So that's the vocative where you're calling out somebody's name or calling out a name. Um, so in English, we would just say, you know, a hello chloda. I mean, it would be put in a, with a, uh, with a comma, but to separate it out, but it's not changed in any way. Uh, but in, but Asquelga, it does change, uh, an H gets put after the initial consonant. And sometimes an H gets put before the initial vowel sometimes too. So this is called lynching or aspiration. And it just, it softens the first consonant. So that's all it does. Um, but when you call out somebody's name, uh, you're going to, um, put that ah in front of it, that uh, and then you're going to lynch in that first um, first consonant, if it can take one. There are a few letters that can't take one. Um, but let's go look down at the notes. Um, so the vocative is ah plus the name, and then it's lynched. Um, so here are some other examples. So Sean would become a Sean. Uh, Cloda becomes a Cloda. Um, Yoan becomes uh, a Yoan. So there's an example there of the H going in front of a vowel. So um, you can also do it with like animal names if you're actually calling that thing that name. Um, it also happens with names uh, that are given to pe or titles that are given to people, um, such as uh, mom. Uh, mom for mom uh, and uh, avam or awam, depending on your dialect. Um, kara, the word for friend, can be um, ahara. Um, so ahara, it, you'll see that in letters and emails um, a lot. So ahara uh, just means friend, and you're just calling that person friend. You're calling them that. Um, and uh, karda um, 
and Ahartha. So as you can see, the the sound changes. Um, so Leah, how would you pronounce um, those right there? Mom, Avam, Kara, Ahara, Karda, Aharda. Okay. So yeah, there. I, I always want me and Leah to give uh, our different pronunciations because mine's probably got a bit of an American accent in it. Um, and also I've learned from so many different sources uh, online and otherwise that I'm sure mine's kind of a mismatch. Um, but yeah, Leah, as she said earlier, speaks uh, the Munster dialect. So I uh, always want to show the different ones because uh, they're all valid. Um, just yeah. for people who aren't as familiar with the dialects, would you be able to maybe describe what those look like? And uh, we could get into some of the differences later. But Yeah, we'll touch on them later. Um, and that's the thing is when you're learning Irish, um, much as when people go to learn English from other languages, you want to know which type of, of that language you're going after. So like there's a difference between, say, British English and American English. Um, there's a difference between, um, you know, Ulster Gaelga and Munster Gaelga and uh, Connemara Gaelga. So um, there's all of those differences between those three. Those are the three main ones. There was Leinster, but that was in Dublin and that one kind of phased out. Um, as far as I know, if anybody else knows a different different situation for that, let me know. But as far as I know, there's only three main ones now. Um, and so Northern Ireland has the Ulster Irish um, and Connemara kind of in the middle in the West um, has um, the Connacht uh, dialect and then uh, the Southern uh, Ireland area has the Munster dialect. So um, that's the, uh, the three that I know of so far. And, course, um, and small divisions between the different um, uh, prov uh, provinces of Ireland as well. But yeah, mm -hmm. basically, for instance, the the tiny Gwelthot where I was that I, I was a part of um, Gwelthot Nadesha, Gwelthot Naringa. Um, they're very small differences between the the different even the different parishes within that overall Gwelthot. Mm -hmm. But overall, yeah. here, for instance, the Munster Irish that I speak sounds a lot more rounded to my ears than um, the Connemara Irish, mm -hmm. the Irish of Connacht in the West, which um, mm -hmm. sizes more than like, yeah, this is slightly mm -hmm. more nasal, nasal sound than the mm -hmm. um, Munster Irish, so. Yeah, and I know that in Ulster, the lynchened, uh, the lynchened consonants change a whole lot more there. Um, so like, um, I think uh, like, some of the like ending GHs or DHs like completely go away or become an OO sound uh, depending on the word. So it is different. Um, so yeah, there's differences. They're all valid though. And um, they did standardize things uh, at least from what it was taught in schools for the most part. Um, but almost like when you, if someone were to learn English and come to America, different people are going to speak differently. I mean, that it's normal. So like if you go to Southern, you know, Southeastern or Southern America, they're going to speak differently than if you go to like New York or New England. Um, you know, people down here say car and have like, you know, that hard R and the drawn out vowel, but up, up North they might say ka. You know, so depending on where you are. So it's those type of differences. It's not a completely different language, but you do have to get used to the fact that there are different pronunciations for different words, just like there are in English. So, um, but, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the copula. Um, so the copula is just, we have it in English, but it's not, it's not differentiated from the verb to be. So um, to be is basically the copula, but it's structured in a different way. It literally is an equal sign between um, one noun and another. So you can't connect a noun and an adjective. You can't say like um, uh, the house is new 
Um, that's a noun and adjective, but you could say um, this is the new house. So this counts as a noun and new house. Um, so that's what we have in the conversation. Um, so when we look at the conversation, we have shoe uh, mahat nu or shoe mahat nua, um, and so that shoe is actually shortened. It's actually um, you could actually say uh, a show a mahat nua, um, and so it's kind of a, a shortened, more conversational way of using the copula um, by saying shoe. Um, or, sh or some people will even drop the A and just say show um, mahatnu. So that's a form of the copula there. And if you see the sentence, um, we have, let me scroll back up. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll back up to the conversation. Um, so here we have the question form of the copula, which is just ane. So ane, um, like is it? Or, um, and an show is this. So the show there to add it to the A um, cause it to become this. So is this your house? Um, and so we'll see the copula more and more. We don't have a lot of examples here, um, but mostly we have like Tashe Das or Tashe Das. Um, you know, it is nice. Um, we have Ta, which means is, um, and then She, which means it and das or jas, uh, which means nice. So here we have a noun and an adjective um, that are connected by ta, which is the regular form of to be. It's not the copula. So ta is used when you don't have just a noun equals another noun. Um, and as you can see, it comes first. So ta, she, jas. Um, so let's go ahead and we won't spend too much on the copula just now. We'll probably have an entire lesson on it um, just because it can be one of those stumbling blocks for English speakers coming to the Irish language um, using the copula. And I still mess up on it all the time. So <laughs> uh, even in the uh, intermediate stage. Uh, so uh, there are plenty of notes there as well on that uh, just to get you started in the PDF. Um, I did want to touch a little bit on the imperative. So the imperative um, in the conversation, we said Tarish and, uh, and Swishis or Sigshis. Um, and so those are commands. Those are imperative forms of the verb. So the imperative form is literally just the dictionary form, the plain dictionary form. Um, plus everything else. Uh, but depending on whether you're talking to one person or many people, it can change a little bit, but we'll get into that later. Um, yes, did someone have a question or? Nope, <laughs> I must be hearing feedback. Um, okay, so um, so tar is shock is come in. So tar is come to come and that's the plain form of that verb. Um, so tar is shock, and is shock is inside. Um, so in, inside a house or inside a place. Um, so tar is shock. Um, and then uh, suishis or swigshis or is it sig? Sig. Sig, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, sigshis, um, so is sit down. So uh, sig or sui is to sit, um, and that's the plain form of the verb. So, um, you know, so that's the construction for the imperative. Um, now, if I were to, and like be is to be, so if I were going to say like, be careful, so I'd say be kormak, uh, be kormak, be careful. Uh, but if I were to talk to a group of people and tell them all to be careful, I would say be kormak. Uh, so it does change a little bit and you can look up those changes in um, uh, changlon.ie. Any good online dictionary will have those uh, figured out for you. But for the most part, those are the two. Uh, there's only two types of changes for those verbs for that. So either plain or um, they'll add a little bit to them. But we'll see some of those later. Um, but just to touch on the last thing here is the lynching with possessive. So we have two possessive words in the lesson this time, which are ma and da. 
um, so or molt and dope. Um, and so those are my and your singular. Um, there's a different uh, possessive word, uh, vor. Um, do you pronounce it vor or ver? Vor. Vor. Um, so vor. Um, and vor is you. So there is a you all. There is a y'all in um, Irish. So mm -hmm. if I you say ye in, in English when you're in Ireland. <laughs> ye, yeah, in Hiberno English. Um, yeah, so they say ye. Um, so that's a plural you. So plural you meaning you all or you people. Um, and so we have there's a singular you and a plural you. English doesn't make that distinction. Uh, we just do it by context. Um, but other languages, of course, if you've learned anything from uh, Spanish, other other languages, they do have plural uh, plural use uh, usually. Um, so we have um, my and your singular. Um, these cause that H to happen after consonants that can take an H. Um, and most of them can. Um, there are just a few that don't. Um, so that's why we see um, um, mohak. Uh, so tak becomes mohak. So that TH becomes a H sound huh um so that h changes that t to that sound so the change there happens all the time and that lynching also happens other uh with other possessives so we'll see um like his her their um our in an in next you know, in the next uh, lesson. So we'll see those. But for right now, you know, my and your are probably the most used. Um, and those do create a lynching on any consonants that follow. Uh, and also that's kind of a trigger too uh, for um, knowing that that's the word being possessed. Um, so that's the word that somebody has, or that's the item that somebody has uh, by knowing that that's, the word that's being changed. Um, that's the word that has the lynching. So, all right. So uh, we have, so that's, as you can see, that tiny conversation had a ton of grammar points and I'm sure I may have missed like some of the vague, more ones that show up in a more vague sense. But um, those are things we're going to introduce more and more and kind of repeat through until they become more natural for all of you. So um, did anyone uh, have any questions or if you can, um, we may have missed a couple of questions, but if you have any questions uh, and want to type them in the comments to, um, if you can type them in all caps, that can help us uh, see them better. No questions yet. But, uh, I just said the um, Changlin, Changlin, excuse me, link, um, the dictionary link. So, Chang, Changlin, yeah, Changlin, um, and so that's uh, that's the online dictionary. Um, there's also Terma, uh, T uh, T E A R M A dot I E as well, and that one has more technical uh, words. Um, so if you want to look up more technical words about maybe your profession and things like that um, later on uh, when we get into like introducing what you do and we'll have a little bit of that probably next time and we'll do a little bit longer conversation. Um, but we wanted to start small because as you can see, there's a lot to introduce, especially for people who may not have come across the language. So. All right. Uh, I see someone put a comment for uh, Berlaha. <laughs> Berlaha or Berhas. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's see. So um, much, huh? It's pretty much Spanglish. Yeah, Spanglish. like the Irish, Irish Irish English version of Spanglish. <laughs> yeah, the fusion. Um, so yeah. All right. So I think that's it. I don't see any more questions popping up. Um, but if you have any questions, you can always email us as well at gailtalkgreenville at gmail.com. Um, we also have, again, the Facebook if you want to hurry up and join um, on the sign-up list. 
That way you'll get the PDFs and any announcements for the next lessons. Um, oh, Lynchin. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's true. I've heard it pronounced Lynchin and some uh, Lynchin, Lynchin. Yeah, I've heard, heard it pronounced both. So uh, we just got a comment that said uh, it took me a second to realize you were talking about Lynchin uh, because I've not heard it pronounced Lynchin. Um, and that's that's one of the ways that people have probably varied that pronunciation. Yeah, that's true. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> um, so hopefully um, this gives you a really good introduction. The replay will be available and all the links and things will be below it uh, by end of day tomorrow. Um, so I don't know how early I'll be able to get all that on, but I will get everything on uh, by end of day tomorrow. And if you're on the email list, you'll get everything emailed straight to you so you can download uh, and do what you need to. You can print these off, put them in your own little notebook if you want. They're free to keep uh, and go through. And then um, so we will see you all in the next lesson. Quick, quick announcement, too. Um, sure. This is something that I was going to um, see if there was any interest in doing a Zoom type conversation meeting after these classes just if anybody wanted to practice with a live person which is a big big thing for me I think at learning language anyway but I wanted to see if there would maybe be a list of names um, over in the comments section or mm. perhaps you could email them to us um, so we can kind of compile that um, with emails um of those that are interested and i can invite you to our zoom conversation to practice next thursday after class um if there's interest okay. so. and, and and molly may be able to head that on zoom i'm not as familiar with zoom but um if she's able to head it i'll i'm pretty sure i can put a link uh for people to um sign up on a sheet if they want to do the zoom thing um, so I'll have a Google Doc that everyone can uh, go and, you know, add their name to um, so that we can have a list of people who may be interested in a Zoom conversational uh, practice kind of meet up with kind of a Zoom. Uh, was it um, Zoom party? A, uh, oh, what's it called? Dang it. Uh, Zoom pop up gale tuck. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, Zoom pop up gale tuck. Oh, um, Leah, can you get to the comments? There's one for pronunciation. Uh, so from Tim, uh, all in all caps. So yeah, speaking speaking can be the hardest thing for a lot of people, um, especially if you're not in Ireland. Uh, and I've found that too. Um, I'm actually working with someone on italki now to try to get better at speaking. I can read and write really good, uh, but my speaking is weaker. Um, so definitely need to practice that. Um, let's see, Tim says, uh, how do you pronounce? Um, he's got uh, G-A-R-D-A-S-I-O-C-H-A-N-A. -A. I just figured out how to how to access the. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. Um, it's Angarda Shiachana. Angarda Shiachana. Yeah. Literally, so that, literally guardians of the peace. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that I after the S turns that S into a sh sound. Uh, and then that CH is just kind of in the back of the throat. Um, but everything else is, is very regular. So um, I don't know if that was. Hmm? Would you be able to describe what? Uh, and Angarda is just just kind of get like a, oh a that's like the police, the police? yeah the Garda Sheikhana that's the you, typically you just say um the Garda or on Garda the Garda mm -hmm. but yeah the full title technically for the police in the Republic of Ireland is the Garda Sheikhana. Mm -hmm. So the the police that keep the peace basically the end of the police right. of the, yeah. of the Guardians of the Peace, sorry. Yeah. So um, 
Much like I think some places uh, the police are called like guardians of the people or something like that. So it's not an unfamiliar way to 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 call them. Um, but yeah, that's mostly yeah, Garda or Gardi is the police in Ireland. Was someone um, asking about the word Gwiltakta? Or was that just an observation, a comment? Gwiltakta. Gwiltakta, yeah. One of us may have said Gwail Tots <laughs> instead. So Berlachas again. Um, but yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Tim. You're welcome, Tim. Um, all right. So I think we'll go ahead and um, national police. Hmm. Okay. Um, so just reading through the comments there. But um, I think we'll go ahead and... Um, Oh, right. Go ahead and close out yeah. there. Um, now, so just to recap, um, the PDF will be linked uh, in the description below uh, the replay for this uh, by end of day tomorrow. People on the email list was uh, we'll get it uh, through there as well. Um, and then I'll also have links to that Zoom um sign up sheet just to see if anybody's interested. And that way Molly can have all of your emails to invite you to the Zoom if we do that. So if there's a good bit of interest, we'll go ahead and see how that works. So if you're also um, interested in learning your Irish names, we did that last time. So, well, we as in they did it last time. So uh, okay. that's something that you'll want to do, so. <laughs> all right. Oh. And I knew I was forgetting something. Um, so those of you, some of you, if you're language learners, you might know about the site Memrise, or it's it's also an app on your phone. Um, I'm starting to go along with these lessons with the vocab. I'm starting Memrise uh, lesson levels uh, for this, and I'll be linking those in the emails as well. I don't know if I'll be able to link them underneath these videos. Um, but I will try to link them consecutively um, so as everyone can get the um, vocabulary through Memrise as well. Um, I've recorded pronunciations, uh, how I would pronounce it. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can get Leah to also add her pronunciation. So there'll be two pronunciations on all of the words, which will be great. Um, so if we can get that and then that way, each email after each lesson that goes out, um, you'll get all of the links for available uh, lessons. So you'll get you'll continuously get the link uh, for these lessons on Memrise as well. So that'll just be vocabulary practice and pronunciation practice. Um, so hopefully that'll help as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up and we will see y'all next time. Um, I'll be sending out emails for our next one, which should be next Thursday um, at the same time. So 7 p.m. Uh, EST, uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, U.S. So we will see you all there. Shlanga full. Shlanga full. Shlanga. Shlanga good.